This week on TGC News, Kalashnikov goes beyond AK's, a range bag that's a bottomless pit, and the loudest thing to happen after the election. The Shooting Club is a brand new mobile app that brings shooters together. Whether it's at your local range or at a private club, you can use their official targets to compete against your friends all over the world and have chances to win cash and prizes no matter what your score. You just download the free app, sign up, get your targets, and start shooting to win. You can even join the Gun Collective group that I started and shoot against me and other TGC fans. To learn more, hop on the Apple or Google App Store and download the free app now. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News. My name is John Patton, and guess what, guys? TGCgear.com is live. And it comes with a surprise. Not only can you buy the same TGC logo shirt as before, but you can also grab a new version of the Guntrepreneur shirt, as well as things like a long sleeve shirt and a TGC hoodie just in time for fall. Here's the surprise. I've been waiting to announce this because I'm trying to get my ducks in a row, but I am going to give away something absolutely epic. It's kind of taking a little bit longer than I originally anticipated, but I'm going to launch the store now. Well, what does that mean for you guys? Well, from now until the announcement of the prizes and rules for this giveaway, all of your purchases are gonna count towards the entries. I can tell you that the prize will involve me giving away a rifle and a trip to go use that same rifle to hunt here in the US. That's really all I'm gonna say for now, so go check out tgcgear.com and get yourself some entries. Now, this week's first story is about, well, quite honestly, guns we can't buy here in the States. However, Kalashnikov Concerned, the actual Kalashnikov, not the company that stole the name here in the States, has released four new guns at the Army 2016 Expo in Moscow. First up, a replacement for the AK-12 called the AK-12. Wait, what? Essentially, the fancier AK-12 that we came to know and love is out, and the namesake is slapped onto what appears to be a normal AK-47. That's a shame. Beyond that, we have some really interesting guns like the VSV-338, which is a precision rifle chambered in 338 Lapua Magnum. Lapua, Lapua, whatever. It has a side folding, completely adjustable stock, key mod rail up front, and on top of that underwhelming stuff, this is actually Kalashnikov's first precision bolt gun ever. It's pretty cool to see. And they also announced this, the MA or Micro Assault Rifle chambered in 545 and appearing to be a replacement for the AK-74U. Call of Duty fans rejoice, this thing looks cool. I'm kind of starting to get a little sad right now because I can't go buy one of these things. And last but not least, we have this bad boy, the SVK. Appearing to be a replacement for the SVD and Dragunov type rifles, this extremely linear looking rifle is going to be chambered in either 7.62x54R or 51 NATO. Again, I'm sad that I can't get one, but it's cool to see the new DMR style rifle from Kalashnikov. They aren't exactly a company known worldwide for innovation in recent years, so I'm pumped to see them back in the game. And on Hashtag Not A Review, the segment where I take a product and give you guys a hands-on spotlight, we're taking a closer look at the Hackett Equipment Range Bag. You're probably saying, John, why should I give a damn about a range bag? Well, I normally wouldn't even agree to do a Not A Review on something like this, but the Hackett Bag is kind of unique. First off, it doesn't look like a traditional range bag. I know a lot of guys don't want to proclaim to the world that they have Arms guns out. on them just by carrying a bag, and this happens Keep to look spinning. like a regular old backpack. I like that, it's different than normal. The other thing that stood out to me about this thing is that the lockable zippers are essentially entrances to a cavern. On the very front, you have a fairly standard pocket with some internal zippered pockets, and then as you go deeper, you have even more pockets, and then you have pouches that'll hold AR mags, boxes of ammo, or cleaning kits, and whatever else you can come up with. And then you have a gigantic main compartment that will hold four handguns in the dedicated holsters, then it will also hold a ton of mags on the opposite side, and you have a center divider that can hold things like documents or targets or something like that. I personally like the idea of keeping NFA tax stamps right in there because that's probably where I'm gonna put like suppressors and things like that all in that main compartment. Beyond that, I found that you can fit an AR pistol with a foldable stock or an SBR right in the middle of all of this. It's absolutely cavernous, it's ridiculous. My only concern is that once you load it all up, it's heavy. <laughs> 
They did, however, do a great job managing the weight on your shoulders with the padded straps and back panels. Overall, I think this is a great option for a discreet range bag. And here's something we don't always have on Hashtag Not A Review. Since Hackett Equipment is a newer company and they understand that the TGC audience is full of awesome people that need good gear, if you swing over to HackettEquipment.com right now and use the code TGC20, you'll get 20% off your purchase. Big thanks to them for that. Of course, I know you guys at home genuinely appreciate the chance to save some money from the people that support TGC. And in I can't believe this company is still in New Jersey news, Henry Repeating Arms has teamed up with the NRA to put together an event called the 1,000 Man Shoot. They're attempting to set a record by having 1,000 people simultaneously firing Henry Golden Boy 22 lever actions. I can hear the freedom ringing already. This event is set to take place on November 14th, just after the presidential election at Ben Avery Shooting Facility in Phoenix, Arizona. The president of Henry, Anthony Imperato, was quoted as saying, it's no coincidence this event happens just a week after the presidential election. Whether we get a president that supports the Second Amendment or one that does not, we should never be asleep at the wheel and must continue to fight for our freedoms. This event is all about showing a sense of patriotism, community, and camaraderie. Plus, we can all come together and have some fun. Honestly, I wish this was on the East Coast because it's going to be freaking awesome. Now, if you guys are interested in participating, unfortunately, now there is a waiting list. Participants could pay $650 and get an ultra limited edition Henry Golden Boy Silver 1000 Man Shoot Edition, say that 10 times fast, as well as a special case and some other swag to go with it and a spot on the firing line. I pay that all day for a unique rifle and a spot in firearms history, but I can't because wait list. <laughs> If any of you out there are attending this, please let me know. I'd love to get some footage and coverage from this event. Now, while you're sitting there dreaming about the freedom coming down the pipe on November 14th, be sure to stick around for a friendly fire question about gun designers. The DD5 16-inch 308 rifle from Daniel Defense features advancements like dual 5.56 ejectors, a unique flanged barrel extension that does away with the need for a barrel nut, a flared magwell for SR25 mags, an ambi safety, an internal detent charging handle, and combines all these things with DD's cold hammer forged barrels, a Geissele SSA, a 15-inch keymod rail, and it comes in all under eight and a half pounds. To learn more about the DD5, click the link down in the description or head over to DanielDefense.com. This week's friendly fire question is from Garrett Bouslaw, I think that's how it's pronounced, on the TGC Facebook page. And he asked, if you could spend the day with any famous gun designer and pick their brain, who would it be? This is a really fun question. Instantly, I thought of two guys that I just find fascinating. First up, J.D. Jones, the man behind the Whisper cartridges like 300 Whisper, aka the brother to 300 Blackout, and 510 Whisper, which, just go look it up, it's, it's nuts. And things like this, the 950 JDJ. The mind of a person that can come up with so many unique cartridges is someone I want to chat with. The other person that comes to mind is Ronnie Barrett, the man behind one of the most important rifles in modern warfare. His story, again, fascinates me, and his rifles are tons of fun to shoot. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. We talk about new guns and ammo and products all the time. What do you think is the most innovative thing to hit the firearms world ever? The most innovative. I want to hear your answer down in the comments below. And if you want your question answered right here on the show, you can post that on Facebook, you can post it on Instagram, Snapchat, or you can now go to theguncollective.com and send it through the friendly fire page. And unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. Be sure to go check out tgcgear.com and grab your shirts while you can. Guys, you know what to do. If you enjoyed the episode, hit that like button, share it with your friends. And if you didn't like it, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.